Hi, so I did a vlog a few weeks ago um, where I was taking photos of a bee and I found that I was being hampered a bit by the minimum focusing distance of the lens I was using. Uh, one of our subscribers, Philip Culbertson, um, has left a very helpful comment recommending the use of an extension tube. So we bought one. Uh, we bought the Canon EF25 um, and we've got up nice and early today to... Ridiculously early. Yes, unfortunately at the moment dawn is at 4.55, um, which means we left the house before dawn. Yeah. Um, I have had about one hour's sleep, so <laughs> I apologise for the look of my face. We set the alarm for quarter to four this morning. <laughs> um, having had a late finish at work yesterday. So, um, yes, we have come to a location that Sam has been to before, um, and we're hoping to try a few macro shots, basically. Um, yeah, and we'll see what the day will hold. So we bought this extension tube, um, we got it second hand um, and essentially what an extension tube does is it basically just sits between uh, your camera lens and your camera body and it brings your minimal focal distance um, basically closer to the front of the lens um, which basically means you can convert a normal lens into essentially a macro lens. So we wanted to give it a go rather than just going straight out and buying a macro lens. Um, so today we're going to be trying a little bit of macro photography and we'll see how we get on. Now, one of the reasons we um, woke up so early is that um, early morning is basically the best time to come out and shoot insects. Uh, they tend to be more docile, they haven't woken up yet, so quite often you can find them sitting still on pieces of grass, um, and it just makes it easier to photograph them. Um, I've managed to get a couple of images of um, some butterflies, but they are now starting to become a little bit more active. So it's been a little bit more difficult to photograph them, you know, with a tripod set up like this. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're kind of combining using the tripod and also walking around and doing a little bit of handheld photography as well. Um, I've got a photograph of a spider set up here. Um, I quite like it. Um, basically, the composition, uh, what I'm going for is I want to get a lot of bokeh that's blurred out background behind the spider. So I've got a, a, a large aperture on the lens um, and I'm using a tripod, which means I can spend a little bit more time getting my composition correct um, and just getting everything set up. Because it's a spider, it's not going to move anywhere. So with macro photography, um, especially when you're using large apertures like f4, at depth of field um, can be really shallow, so getting things in focus is essential. Um, so one um, tip which I've been using for, um, for doing that is to use the live view mode on the back of the camera. And basically by doing that what I can do is I can zoom right in on the spider um, and just make sure that it's really crisp and in focus. We've also got a little bit of a breeze, so the spider is moving around a bit. So I've got a um, cable release, which helps to minimize the movement of the camera, which will obviously um, be amplified when you're using um, the macro setup. But I'm also just waiting um, until the breeze has settled down a little bit, um, just to make sure that that spider is completely in focus when I take the image. So I have just spotted an orchid. Um, if my botany serves me correctly, it's a dactyl oryza. Um, and this is probably a, a really good opportunity to use the, the extension tube so that I can get up nice and close to it. And this is probably exactly the, the time of when to use an extension tube. So um, I'm wondering how to frame the shot. Um, there's not much scope to, I don't want to clear all the, the vegetation around it, so there's not much scope to completely declutter it. I was wondering whether I should leave um, some of the, the tall plants around it and kind of make it a, a shot showing just how small it is um, and just cutting away some of the grasses and only cutting away grass um, to, to reveal it and leaving these plants um, around up. Oh, I'll have a play, see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's safe to say there's a few pros and cons with using one of these extension rings. Um, it's been really useful for just being able to get the lens closer to the subject and as a result of that you can get it really magnified in, in the lens. Um, so that's really good. Which was great for the orchid. Um, it would be nice to see how the shots turn out of the orchid but I definitely wouldn't have managed to get that same composition yeah. without the extension ring. So. And I think that um, that kind of highlights that it's really better for uh, stationary subjects mm. more so than moving ob objects. Yes. Subjects. Subjects, <laughs> yes. Because um, Hannah tried to take a few photos of some bees. Well, I, I tried for all of five seconds really because um, so it works best in manual focus, um, which is just impossible with a moving bee. Um, you really need like a stationary butterfly if it's going to be an insect um, or say or the the um, you had some joy with the grasshoppers. Yeah. The so, grasshoppers were staying still. Yeah. So basically when when you've got a, a subject which is, is sort of fairly stationary and isn't moving around too much, it actually works really well. Um, and um, manually focusing with it is definitely the way forward. If you're using an autofocus, it tends to hunt around mm. too much. So yeah. um, you're best keeping it to the manual focus. Mm, definitely. Um, yeah. But the other thing to point out about this is, um, and if you're thinking of getting into macro photography and you don't want to invest in a whole dedicated macro lens, which is obviously going to be better in most circumstances, um, these things are really inexpensive. I mean, um, we bought a Canon one, which um, we managed to pick up secondhand. Um, 80 pounds? Yeah, it wasn't overly expensive, yeah. but you can also buy them from, there's a company called Kenko, um, which make really good ones, which uh, we actually looked at a few reviews before buying this, and the Kenko ones came out as pretty much just as good as the Canon ones. So there's, it's, all it is essentially is a bit of plastic which sits between your camera body and the lens. Um, it has the electrical connection, so you can still use autofocus. Um, but it's uh, it's really not a complicated bit of equipment. So mm. actually just getting a third party um, set yeah. is, is also just as good. Um, but because we found this one cheap, we decided to go with Canon. Um, yeah. But yeah. So if you're thinking of getting into macro photography, I definitely recommend maybe trying a, a, a um, an extension tube. Um, but yeah, it, it, just be just be aware of its limitations. Um, so if you liked this vlog, please do click like please subscribe and we'd love to know comments below.